In this module, we're going to set up the asset first seen back in course 6. We will require this asset to move between our levels at will as well as after the completion of a game of darts. We will accomplish this by creating a blueprint with a collision box that checks if the actor that collides with it was the player pawn, and if so, initiate the level change. We're going to take advantage of async loading to quickly load the map in the background and only send us when it's loaded and ready. In the meantime, we'll set up a splash screen to show to our players while they are waiting. Let's get started. Inside of the dev folder, create a new blueprint actor named BP Travel 2. We're going to design this single asset to use anywhere we want. For the version placed in the lobby, we'll have it send us to the game stage, and for the one placed in the game stage, of course we'll have it send us back to the lobby. Open the blueprint and add a box collision component. The first variable that we're going to need is an instance editable vector named box extent. I'm going to keep organized and place this in the in a um, collision modification category and I'll compile. We're going to use this vector to scale and position the collision box. Open the construction script to create this logic. We'll need a reference to both the box and the box extent variable. From box, create a set box extent node and a set relative location node. So we need the set box extent and the set relative location. Plug in our box extent variable directly into the in box extent input. Split the location struct on the set relative location node and from box extent, create a break vector node. Plug only the Z into the Z input. What this combination will allow us to do is scale the X, Y, and Z however we'd like while ensuring that the box never goes below the origin of this blueprint. If we increase the Z by 10, we raise it by 10. That way it's always on the floor. Compile the blueprint and place one on the center stage in the lobby. I'll scale mine to encompass the whole stage. 300 by 300. And now you can see that when I raise the Z, the box is now set on the floor and only going up. I'm both increasing the size and moving it up at the same rate. So it, it looks like it's only increasing in the Z. I think 300 is actually too big. I'm going to change this to 250 by 250. Save the map and now let's move to the game stage. The game stage is located in darts, maps, I'm going to be working in the C0 files now. So I'm going to go to C0 game stage. I'll place the BP Travel 2 in the back near the stairs and size it appropriately. Okay, return to the event graph of BP Travel 2. Let's create the next variable we need. It will store a soft reference to the map itself. If you are unfamiliar with soft object references, they are a very handy way of holding on to the link of a certain asset that we can load in the background. This is a way for us to reference an object, even one as large as a full map, and load it only when we're ready. Using this method will reduce the freezing of the frame while in VR. Create a new variable named course level to travel to and make it instance editable. For the type, search for object, and instead of object reference, select soft object reference and compile. An object re reference, I want a soft object reference. Make an instance editable, and I'll compile. Right click the box in the components tab, and under add event, select add on component begin overlap event. The first thing we'll do is check if the course level to travel to variable is a valid soft object reference and connect that to a branch. From the begin overlap event, drag from other actor and cast to BPP pawn darts. Another reason that we used a parent pawn. Now all the pawns that inherit from BPP pawn darts will be able to trigger this event. Get a reference of course level to travel to and create an async load asset node. 
and plug it into the BPP cast node and compile. Notice that there are two execution outputs on this node. The top one will fire immediately and the second one, labeled completed, will only fire when the asset is fully loaded. Let's start with the completed branch first. From completed, create a delay of one second. We're going to have a splash screen appear in front of the user shortly and because the level will load so quickly, we are artificially delaying the load time so that the player can see the splash screen. From delay, create an open level node. Get another reference of course level to travel to. We need to modify the path slightly so the open level node can find it. Drag from course level to travel to and search for to string. Then create a split paths node. From path part, create an append node and add two additional pins. In B, write a forward slash and plug extension part into C. Finally, plug the result into the level name in the open level node and compile. Let's move on to the splash screen. From the top execution on the async load asset node, search for add loading splash screen and be sure to select the node from the Oculus library. Set the texture to Unreal Logo Mark. Set translate in meters to 1, 0, 1.5 so that the texture is in front of the player and risen up a bit. Set the size to 0.3.3 .3 and set the clear before add to true. Directly after, create a show loading screen node. Now that we have the logic to show the splash screen when we are moving levels, we also need to have logic to hide it, otherwise it will always be on. From begin play, add another delay of one second, again artificially extending the amount of time that load takes. After, create a hide loading screen node. Now when we enter the new map and this blueprint is spawned and event begin play fires, the splash screen, if there was one, will be removed. Before we add the next event, we need to make sure we are implementing the blueprint interface BPI Darts Com. After implementing this interface and compiling, right click in the event graph and search for Event Travel To. Plug this into the async load asset node. Now, add another event from this interface named Game Over. From Game Over, create a branch again checking the validity of our course level to travel to variable. Then create a delay of 10 seconds. This is only to delay the game from sending the user back too early. Feel free to experiment with this amount or even giving the user the option to set this amount by setting this up in our player settings UI. After the delay, directly call our travel to event. All right. This asset is ready for use. The last thing we'll add is the call to the game over function inside of this interface. Open our game mode darts and find the check game status event. At the end, right click and search for get all actors with interface. Set our BPI darts com as the interface value and from out actors, create a for each loop. And finally from array element call game over. This is going to produce an array of all the actors in the scene that are implementing this interface and call this function on all of them. If the actor is using it, like our BP travel to, it will fire. So I need to set travel to, to, to uh, C0 lobby in the game stage and save this and go to the game stage, to the lobby, I mean, and make sure this one is set to C0 game stage. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's test this. I'll press play in VR and go off to our game stage. Remember back to when we discussed the way that the Unreal Engine's VR template handles teleportation. When I press the teleport button, BP Motion Controller searches for a valid location to teleport us to. This location must be identifiable in a nav mesh. When playing in the editor and you change levels, the new level may not regenerate the nav mesh, which would result in us being unable to teleport. This will not happen after we package our builds, but keep this in mind when testing. Okay, I'll teleport to the volume and off I go. I've now arrived in the game stage. Okay, 
So that's working. In the next module, we're going to set up our achievements.